Hi, I'm Lisa Leiter. In Chicago Business Today, the next wave of bank failures. Since early 2009, 25 Chicago area banks have failed. Failures have slowed since last spring when six lenders fell at once on a Friday afternoon in April. But that doesn't mean the industry is out of the woods yet. In fact, the city is on pace to double the number of bank failures. As Crane senior reporter Steve Daniels reports in this week's print edition of Cranes, more than 40 local banks are currently at risk. We sat down to talk more about what's going on. Steve, there's a measure of risk called the Texas ratio. Anything above 100 percent is considered a bank at risk. What are the numbers telling us right now? Well, the numbers are telling us right now that there's still a lot of banks that are at risk in the, in the Chicago market. Uh, over 40 have Texas ratios over 100, which basically means that uh, it, they need to raise capital, they need to put more money in, into the bank in, in order to keep it solvent. Now, we had some you know, 31 banks over 100 as of June 30, 2009, 18 of those failed. So roughly 60 percent of these banks have been failing uh, in this cycle. So which banks right now would you say are most at risk and why? Um, some of the bigger ones include uh, Metropolitan Bank Group, which is a, a, a group of banks that are owned by Peter and Paula Faseas, who are two pretty well-known civic players in Chicago. You know, the other one uh, that's somewhat sizable, First Chicago Bank and Trust, over a billion in assets. It, they, the, the, the California private equity investors who own that bank named the bank after the old First Chicago. S ever since, have been trying to dig their way out of uh, loan quality problems. They've, they've put a lot of capital into the bank already. They need to put more. They say they will. Okay. So is there anything out there? I mean, the economy is still you know, moving along at a, at a slow pace. Is there any hope that things can turn around and save some of these banks? What would really help would be a, a recovery in real estate values or at least have them start moving up. I mean, so many of these banks that are in trouble, the loans are collateralized by real estate assets. And the, the, you know, the lower the valuations on those real estate assets, the more those banks have to write down those loans, the more they have to put into their loan loss reserves. And, and, and that eats into capital. The longer it goes on, the tougher it, it gets for these banks. Sure. And you would say that we're about halfway through the bank failures, that we're, we're likely to feel more pain all through 2011, right? Oh, yeah. You know, the, part of the problem is that these banks' owners have not been able to find investors or buyers uh, when they get into a real troubled state. Maybe some of those people would come off the shelf. And why haven't they come off the shelf yet? Because they don't know how, what the depth of the problems at those banks are. You don't know what you're buying. Uh, if you know, if you have a good solid idea, okay, this is as bad as it gets, here's what we need to write off, then you can do it, then you can go forward. What about small business owners? What kind of impact would it have on them? Well, I mean, overall, we're going to see fewer banks in Chicago. You know, fewer banks, the less competition, it's going to affect terms and pricing down the road. Sure, absolutely. Well, Steve, good story. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. And that's this edition of Chicago Business Today. For more on this story, be sure to check out this week's print edition of Cranes and chicagobusiness.com. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving weekend. We'll see you back here on Monday.